Brothers and sisters, uh, good evening and we would like to welcome you all tonight to our Gippsland State Christmas devotion. We would like to acknowledge uh, sitting on the stand as our state president, President Brian Smith, who is also presiding over this devotional tonight. Sit beside him is President uh, Phillips, First Council in the State Presidency. My name is President Asiata, Second Council in the State Presidency. President Smith asked if I can conduct this devotional tonight. We uh, welcome you all tonight so we can celebrate together the faith of our Savior and our Redeemer, Jesus Christ. We Open our devotional tonight by singing hymn number 209. After which, uh, the opening prayer will be offered by Bishop Loya Hunt of the Lane Group Board.
Brothers and sisters, uh, our program tonight we face here an instrument musical from Sire Scott, Gemma Phillips, and this is me, Clyde. And then our program will carry on from there. Christmas is more than trees and twinkling lights, more than toys and gifts and baubles of a hundred varieties. It is love of the Son of God for all mankind. It reaches out beyond our power to comprehend. It is magnificent and beautiful. It is peace. It is the peace which comforts, which sustains, which blesses all who accept it. It is faith 
It is faith in God and His eternal Son. It is faith in His wondrous ways and message. It is faith in Him as our Redeemer and our Lord. We testify of His living reality. We testify of the divinity of His nature. In our times of grateful meditation, we acknowledge His priceless gift to us and pledge our love and faith. This is what Christmas is really about.
Jesus was born on that holy night long ago. Our Heavenly Father's love was showered upon the people of the earth. He sent his greatest of all gifts, his only begotten and beloved Son, so that we all may someday return to our heavenly home. The best way we can show our love for him is to live his teachings and to obey his commandments. For he said, if you love me, keep my commandments. At this special time of year, may you feel the joy of Christmas remembering Jesus as you see the lights of Christmas, as you sing the music of Christmas, as you sense the hurry and busyness of Christmas. May love be mirrored in your hearts as you reach out and give of yourself with love to all those around you.
Jesus gave not only his life, but his gospel for each of us. His gift of the gospel was freely given to the world. But just as a gift is of little value if you put it on a shelf and never use it, the fullness of the gospel cannot bring the greatest happiness unless you understand its message of hope and gladly live its teachings. We honour Jesus' birth, but without his death, that birth would have been but one more birth. He made the great atonement for the sins of mankind. He taught the way, the truth and the life. He is the door to immortality and eternal life.
he implored the child who lay in a stable long ago, and I thank thee that the glow of life and love about him then still is felt and known to men. I thank thee that this season brings remembrance of the King of Kings, and of the star and angel throngs, and peace expressed in heavenly songs. I thank thee too for every way thy love has blessed us on this day. I'd like to thank to all those who participated in our program so far. We will now the congregation will sing together hymn number 210 and then our program will continue from there.
Christmas season, we sing his praises and speak our words of faith and gratitude and love. It is his influence in our lives that stirs within us more, more kindness, more respect, more love, more concern. It is because of him and his teachings that we reach out to those in trouble, distress and need wherever they may be. God be thanked for the gift of his son, the redeemer of the world, the saviour of mankind, the prince of life and peace, the holy one. President Gordon B. Hinckley.
before the foundation of this world, the birth and atoning sacrifice of our Saviour Jesus Christ were anticipated as the crowning acts of the plan of salvation. And so it was when the Saviour was born that uh, an angel of the Lord came upon uh, the shepherds in the field uh, and the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Saviour, which is Christ the Lord. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. In the Western Hemisphere, similar events happened as we read in the Book of Mormon at the time of the Saviour's birth. It tells us in 3 Nephi chapter 1, And it came to pass that the words which came unto Nephi were fulfilled, according as they had been spoken. For behold, at the going down of the sun there was no darkness, and the people began to be astonished, because there was no darkness when the night came. And they began to know that the Son of God must surely appear, yea, and find all people upon the face of the whole earth from the west to the east, both in the land north and in the land south were exceedingly astonished. And so the great crowning event of the, the plan of salvation, the Saviour's arrival on the earth, was the subject of signs and wonders, uh, praise and joy and heavenly messengers. Now in the 2,000 years since the Saviour's birth, the importance of those events has diminished not one whit, but remains of eternal importance to his children. Now in recent times, uh, the importance of missionary work has uh, been very much upon my mind. And at this Christmas time, I consider, consider the importance of the message that we celebrate at Christmas, the birth of our Saviour Jesus Christ, and what great need there is for our brothers and sisters around us to know with great assurity that he was born, that he was the Son of God, that he was the Saviour of the world, that he died for our sins, and that he was resurrected on the third day and overcame both spiritual and physical death. And it's our responsibility as Latter-day Saints to preach the Gospel. This is a wonderful time of year for us to open our mouths and to speak of Christmas, of the true meaning of Christmas, uh, the birth of this, our Saviour Jesus Christ, something that unfortunately gets a little lost amongst the hustle and bustle of gifts and shopping and other activities in the world around us. And so I invite uh, you to join with me to look at this Christmas time for opportunities to share the Gospel of Jesus Christ with those around us to talk a little and share a little of our testimonies about his miraculous birth, uh, his central role in the plan of salvation and the joy and happiness that can come to us as we lay hold upon his atoning sacrifice uh, and gain that, the, the happiness that comes to those whose lives are clean and pure and are prepared to return and live with their Father in heaven. I leave with you my testimony uh, that Jesus is the Christ. It is a great joy to my soul to know that, and the Holy Ghost has made it known to me. I'm grateful for him, I'm grateful at this time of year for his birth, and for the perfect example that he set, and the sacrifice that he wrought for me, and the eternal blessings that that brings. And I say these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Grateful for all those who participate in our program so far. The congregation we will sing together the uh, hymn number coming on page 208, and in our last part of our program we will continue from there. Thank you.
for being here this evening. We uh, trust that you've enjoyed the, 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 the music and the words that have been spoken. I testify to you that, the, that they are true. That these hymns have been inspired and the words that have been spoken have also uh, been inspired. I'd like to thank those that have made this possible, our sound and video technicians and those that have uh, contributed by singing this evening and, and, uh, and narrating for us. Obviously this is the time of year when we think about Jesus Christ. It is uh, becoming increasingly, uh, well his teachings are becoming increasingly Or should I say they're just less important in our community. Um, at this time of year we have the opportunity to share the gospel and our te the teachings of Jesus Christ and our testimonies with our friends and neighbours and those who with whom we associate. I encourage you to do that, to take this opportunity at this time of year and I know that their hearts will be touched as we, as we do this. Um, this time of year, Christmas, is a time when we think about Jesus Christ. I was with my grandchildren last night at a family function, and each one of them, uh, I'm sure it wasn't, it wasn't organised, it seemed like it was organised, but I'm sure that it wasn't, uh, took the opportunity when we had a quiet moment together <coughs> to ask me a very important question, something that was on their minds at this particular time of year. And almost word for word, they said to me, Grandpa, bought my Christmas present yet. I think there's more to Christmas for them and for us. Uh, obviously we have the opportunity to give, but one of the greatest gifts that we can give and share with others is our testimony of Jesus Christ. I think about uh, the words of King Benjamin. He said, Lo, he suffered temptation and pain of body, hunger, thirst, and fatigue, even more than man can suffer, except it be unto death. Behold, blood cometh from every pore, so great shall be his anguish for the wickedness and the abomination of his people. And he shall be called Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the Father of heaven and of earth, the creator of all things from the beginning, and his mother shall be called Mary. King Benjamin was prophesying the birth of Jesus Christ and the great act of the atonement of Jesus Christ. And the, the promise that comes to us if we live the commandments. The scriptures are replete with uh, information, instructions, are pleading from our Heavenly Father to keep the commandments. And then following that are the great promises that are ours if we keep all the commandments. President Nelson reminded us in, in his uh, address at the Christmas devotion. He said, Our Saviour, uh, a gift from our Saviour is actually a promise, a promise of life everlasting. This does not mean simply living for a really, really long time. Everyone will, uh, will live forever after death, regardless of the kingdom or glory for which they may qualify. Everyone will be resurrected and experience immortality. But eternal life is much more than a designation of time. Eternal life is the kind and quality of life that Heavenly Father and His beloved Son live. When the Father offers us everlasting life, He is saying in essence, if you choose to follow my Son, if your desire is really to become more like Him, then in time you may live as we live and preside over worlds and kingdoms as we do. Uh, in Elder Holland's uh, words, that I cannot sing the songs that are, have been sung here this evening. And, uh, and I'm not as articulate as, as most, but I would like to bear my testimony to you that I know that Jesus Christ is our Saviour. He atoned for our sins and He made it possible for each one of us to return and live with Him and our Heavenly Father and our families and the eternal worlds if we keep the commandments. We will have great joy and happiness in this world if it is not something that we need to uh, uh, endure but, but enjoy all of the blessings that come to us as we keep the commandments in this world and the next. 
that I'm testifying in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.
My beloved brothers and sisters, what a treasured season this is. We love the strains of, O come all ye faithful, and eagerly come to adore him, Jesus the Christ, that singular babe of Bethlehem, the great Jehovah of the Old Testament, and the Messiah of the New. Tonight, let us consider together the blessings that come to us as we focus on the life, mission, doctrine, and atonement of the Lord Jesus Christ. I invite you, as King Benjamin did for saints in his day, to consider on the blessed and happy state of those that keep the commandments of God. That blessing is for us here and now, but added to it is the eventual promise of never-ending happiness. Simply stated, true followers of Jesus Christ have the privilege of experiencing unspeakable joy forever. I was reminded of this the other day when I met an angel named Lydia. This angel was not dressed in white, and she made it easy for us to visit by coming to my office. Lydia is 12 years old. I was told that she is suffering from a rare, aggressive form of brain cancer. She has an angelic face and a poise beyond her years. As we talked about her life and what lies ahead, she was calm and at peace. When I asked if she had any questions, she quickly replied, What is heaven like? This led to a heart-to-heart -heart discussion about the purpose of life and the blessings that our Heavenly Father and His beloved Son have. They've offered to those who honor and follow Him. Tonight, we are pleased to have Lydia here with her parents. Lydia, would you and your mother and father please stand for a moment? Turn around so everybody can see you. Thank you, Lydia. Brother and Sister Terry, we continue to pray for you. I'm deeply moved by the faith of Lydia and her family. Though facing a monumental challenge as far as this earth life is concerned, Lydia is filled with faith. She has an eternal perspective. She knows that the Lord loves her and will care for her. Her devoted family is filled with the same peace and composure that only faith in the Lord can bring. Lydia's wish was to meet the president of the Lord's Church. But her desires run much deeper than any one-time experience here in mortality. Her deepest desire is to be with her family forever in the celestial realm. That includes her desire always to be with Heavenly Father and Jesus, too. Indeed, our desires influence each of us in profound ways, not just here and now, but beyond. Consider the significance of this statement from Alma. The Lord granteth unto men according to their desire. Desire is important in this season of gift giving when we are particularly mindful of the desires of those whom we love. During this season, I invite you to consider your own desires. What are your deepest desires? What do you really want to experience and accomplish in this life? Do you really want to become more and more like Jesus Christ? Do you really want to live with Heavenly Father and with your family forever and live as He lives? If you do, you will want to accept many gifts offered by the Lord to help you and me 
during our time of mortal probation. Let us focus on four of the gifts Jesus Christ gave to all who are willing to receive them. First, he gave you and me an unlimited capacity to love. That includes the capacity to love the unlovable and those who not only do not love you, but presently persecute and despitefully use you. With the Savior's help, we can learn to love as he loved. It may require a change of heart, most certainly a softening of our hearts, as we are tutored by the Savior how to really take care of each other. My dear brothers and sisters, we can truly minister in the Lord's way as we accept his gift of love. Ask for the Lord's help to love those he needs you to love, including those for whom it is not always easy to feel affection. You may even want to ask God for his angels to walk with you where you presently do not want to tread. A second gift the Savior offers you is the ability to forgive. Through his infinite atonement, you can forgive those who have hurt you and who may never accept responsibility for their cruelty to you. It is usually easy to forgive one who sincerely and humbly seeks your forgiveness. But the Savior will grant you the ability to forgive anyone who has mistreated you in any way. Then their hurtful acts can no longer canker your soul. A third gift from the Savior is that of repentance. This gift is not always well understood. As you know, the New Testament was originally written in the Greek language. In passages where the Savior calls upon people to repent, the word translated as repent is the Greek term metanoeo. This is a very powerful Greek verb. The prefix meta means change. We also use that prefix in English. For example, the word metamorphosis means change in form or shape. The suffix noeo relates to a Greek word that means mind. It also relates to other Greek words that mean knowledge, spirit, and breath. Can we begin to see the breadth and depth of what the Lord is giving to us when he offers us the gift to repent? He invites us to change our minds, our knowledge, our spirit, even our breathing. For example, when we repent, we breathe with gratitude to God who lends us breath from day to day and we desire to use that breath in serving him and his children. Repentance is a resplendent gift. It is a process never to be feared. It is a gift for us to receive with joy and to use, even embrace, day after day as we seek to become more like our Savior. King Lamoni's father caught a glimpse of what lay ahead for those who believed in Christ and followed him. He declared that he would give away all his sins for the privilege of knowing the Lord. True repentance is not an event. It is a never-ending privilege. It is fundamental to progression and having peace of mind, comfort, and joy. A fourth gift from our Savior is actually a promise, a promise of life everlasting. 
This does not mean simply living for a really, really, really long time. Everyone will live forever after death, regardless of the kingdom or glory for which they may qualify. Everyone will be resurrected and experience immortality. But eternal life is so much more than a designation of time. Eternal life is the kind and quality of life that Heavenly Father and His beloved Son live. When the Father offers us everlasting life, He is saying, in essence, if you choose to follow my Son, if your desire is really to become more like Him, then in time you may live as we live and preside over worlds and kingdoms as we do. These four unique gifts will bring us more and more joy as we accept them. They were made possible because Jehovah condescended to come to earth as the baby Jesus. He was born of an immortal father and a mortal mother. He was born in Bethlehem under the most humble of circumstances. His was the holy birth foreseen by prophets since the days of Adam. Jesus Christ is God's transcendent gift the gift of the Father to all of His children. That birth we joyfully celebrate each Christmas season. With our thoughts and feelings so focused on the Savior of the world, what then do we need to do to receive these gifts offered to us so willingly by Jesus Christ? What is the key to loving as He loves, forgiving as He forgives, repenting to become more like Him, and ultimately living with Him and our Heavenly Father? The key is to make and keep sacred covenants. We choose to live and progress on the Lord's covenant path and to stay on it. It is not a complicated way. It is the way to true joy in this life and eternal life beyond. My dear brothers and sisters, my deepest desires are for all of Heavenly Father's children to have the opportunity to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ and to heed His teachings and for Israel to be gathered as promised in these latter days. And I desire that we will believe and receive the love the Savior has for each of us. His infinite and perfect love moved Him to atone for you and me. That gift, His atonement, allows all of His other gifts to become ours. In a coming day, in that millennium for which we are now preparing, every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus is the Christ. And it won't be just this magnificent tabernacle choir at Temple Square singing hallelujah. Every person who has chosen to follow Jesus Christ will sing and shout, Hallelujah, for the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. The kingdoms of, of, of the, the kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of His Christ, and He shall reign forever and ever, King of kings and Lord of lords. I testify that God lives. Jesus is the Christ, the Messiah, this is His Church, which He directs through His prophets. Humbly, we invoke His blessings upon each of you, including desire and ability to accept all gifts the Savior offers to you. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen.
Thank you, brothers and sisters. I would like to uh, thank all those who participate in our program tonight. Also, I would like to uh, thank Sister Akaiti and all those who are helping her for organizing this uh, devotional tonight. We close our devotional tonight by singing in number 203. And then the closing prayer will be offered by Father Lebao. Thank you, brothers and sisters. Thank you. 